Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkene reactions, we're going to be talking about hydrohalogenation. Here we have a hydrohalogenation reaction. The way that we know that this is hydrohalogenation is because the starting material is an alkene or a double bond, and we're reacting it with a hydrogen for hydro and a halogen for halogenation. The first step of this reaction is to have the double bond attack the hydrogen. Then the bond between the hydrogen and the halogen is going to break, and those electrons will go to the halogen, in this case the bromine. So what we have to do next is decide to which side of where the double bond used to be are we going to add the hydrogen. We can either add it to the left carbon of where the double bond used to be, or we can add it to the right side. The way that we decide is using Markovnikov addition. So Markovnikov essentially states that you will put the hydrogen to whichever side there were more hydrogens to begin with. So initially, this carbon had one hydrogen, whereas this carbon had two hydrogens. Therefore, we know we are going to add this hydrogen to this side of where the double bond used to be, because we'd rather put it where there were two hydrogens as opposed to where there was only one hydrogen. So we will add our hydrogen atom there. However, this means that because we broke the double bond, we have stolen a bond from this carbon. That carbon used to have a double bond and it doesn't anymore. So now that carbon is going to have a deficiency. It's going to be electron poor because it's missing one of its four bonds. A carbon atom that only has three bonds is known as a carbocation. And remember that carbocations are very unstable. In this case, the carbocation is going to be a secondary carbocation. Remember that we would rather have a secondary carbocation as opposed to having a primary one. This is the very basis of Markovnikov addition. We'd rather have the carbocation be on the secondary position as opposed to if it were over here where it would be primary. That is the reason that you put the hydrogen where there are more hydrogens, aka the less substituted position. That allows you to form the more stable, more substituted carbocation. However, we can't forget to also put our bromine. The bromine was leaving, it took the electrons from its bond with hydrogen, and now it left and has a full negative sign. Before the bromine can attack the carbocation, you must always check for carbocation rearrangements. In this case, a carbocation rearrangement is going to happen. How do we know that? Look at your carbocation, and I want you to consider the adjacent carbon atoms. Would the carbocation be more stable if it were to move to one of the adjacent carbons? The answer is yes. If it moved to the right, it would become primary, which would not be helpful. However, if it moved to the left, it would become tertiary. Remember that the secondary carbocation is on a carbon atom that is bonded to exactly two carbons. A primary carbocation would be if the carbon of the carbocation had only one carbon bond. Meanwhile, the tertiary position would allow the carbon of the carbocation to be bonded to three carbon atoms, making it more stable. The way that we're going to get the carbocation to move to the more stable position is via a hydride shift. The hydrogen and its electrons will move to the secondary position, and that will allow us to get the more stable, more substituted tertiary carbocation. At this point, we can have our nucleophilic attack happen with the bromine. So don't forget that you've got the bromine floating around, and he has eight electrons, as well as a full negative sign. He is going to come in and attack the carbocation. Remember that a carbocation is flat, like a piece of paper. It is sp2 hybridized, 
and its geometry is trigonal planar. This is because a carbocation, once again, only has three bonds. So what's going to happen is when the bromine attacks the carbocation, 50% of the time, the bromine will add on a wedge. And 50% of the time, it will add on a dash. However, in this case, I don't really care about whether the bromine is adding on a wedge or a dash. So I'll just show it adding in the plane. The reason for that is because I did not form a new chiral center. Remember, a chiral center is a carbon atom that has four distinct groups attached to it. In this case, this carbon does not have four different groups. Two of the groups, notably the methyls, are identical to each other. Since I did not form a new chiral center, I don't have to show my wedges or dashes. I don't have to show my stereochemistry. And this would be the product, the major product, that we would get for this hydrohalogenation reaction. Let's look at another example of hydrohalogenation. Feel free to pause the video, and then you can check your work. So the first step is going to be the double bond attacks the hydrogen. The electrons in the HCl bond are going to break, and then they're going to go to the chlorine. Again, we must decide to which side of where the double bond used to be are we going to add the hydrogen. Will it be to the left side, which is less substituted, or to the right side, which is more substituted? We're going to add it to the left side. Remember, the hydrogen is going to add always to whichever side used to have more hydrogens. The left side used to have two hydrogens, whereas the right side used to only have one hydrogen. Therefore, we will preferentially add our hydrogen to the left side in this case, where there used to be more hydrogens. That means that we are not replacing the bond lost on the right side. That will make this carbon deficient or we will have created a carbocation. In this case, the carbocation is secondary. We also have the chlorine that left and has its eight electrons, as well as a full negative charge. Before the chlorine can do its nucleophilic attack, make sure you never forget to check for a carbocation rearrangement. We always ask ourselves, will we get a carbocation rearrangement? In order to answer the question, we must first assess the stability of the current carbocation. The carbocation is secondary. The way that we know that is because the carbocation, as is, has two carbon bonds. However, can the carbocation become more stable than it already is? The carbocation is going to look to the left, look to the right, look up and look down, and look at its adjacent neighbors. If the carbocation moved to the left, it would become primary, which would not be good. However, if it moved to the right, it could become tertiary. The way that that would happen would be via a methyl shift. We're going to steal one of the methyl groups, and we will move it to where the carbocation is. Therefore, we are going to take the carbocation carbon that used to be deficient and donate the methyl group to it. Now this carbon is no longer deficient. However, we stole a pair of electrons, or really we stole a bond from this carbon. And by stealing a bond from that carbon, we have created a new carbocation. The good news is this carbocation is more stable because it's tertiary. We are now ready to move on with the nucleophilic attack. The chlorine atom with its eight electrons is gonna come in and it is going to perform a nucleophilic attack on the tertiary position. Remember, a carbocation is flat, sp2 hybridized, and its geometry is trigonal planar. What does that mean? It means a carbocation is like a piece of paper. It can get attacked from the front face or from the back face. So when this carbocation gets attacked, the chlorine 50% of the time is going to add on a wedge. And on the other 50% of the time, the chlorine is going to add on a dash. So what we have is we have a 50-50 mixture of the R and S enantiomers. This is important. This is known as a racemic mixture. 
a racemic mixture is when you have 50% R, 50% S, where one of these corresponds to the R and one of these corresponds to the S enantiomers. It doesn't really matter which is which, you just have to recognize that you get a mixture of both enantiomers. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.